Hey everyone, this is Best Game Early, and today I'm back with another Dying Light 2 video. And in this video, we'll be talking about the removed features and items from Dying Light 2. Basically, cut content. Now, before I start the video, I want to give a huge shout out to Bub. He's the guy who found all of these items in the game files and provided me this video footage. So, thanks to him, and yeah, his channel link will be in the description. So, show him some support. Now, coming back to the video, the first cut content in the game is actually a quest which involved an airship. Yes, it's an actual airship. Check this out. It's actually a massive airship that is located close to the VNC tower and right below the airship we also have some few ropes to swing from. The airship has two different models. One model show the airship in good condition. Obviously the textures are missing since it's cut content but the model is very much functional and the second model shows the airship totally destroyed. Now I'm very confused with the chemicals showing on top of the airship. It looks like the airship was attacked by the military back when all these things started in the city of Villador. Also here's a picture talking about the airship. The airship was basically used to see all the monuments of Villador from different perspectives. The airship also moved near the castle during one of the quests but the rest of the details are actually unknown. Now moving to the next cut content, you all know how we can jump from really high places and land safely on top of cars, buses and trash bins. But did you know that Teclan actually had trees where you could land safely without taking any damage? Yes, I'm being honest, check this out. That was really awesome and I don't know why Techland removed these. Also this isn't the actual animation for landing on trees, there is a different animation but you cannot access it. Anyways now moving to the next cut content. This one is my favorite and I hate the fact that it was removed from the game. It's called the Fury. You know how when you run out of immunity your character turns and you basically just die? Well according to the cut content whenever you run out of your immunity, instead of you just dying you basically turn into a superhuman or a monster. Now in this state you're basically a zombie and can destroy pretty much anyone but the moment you enter in the UV light or in a safe place you return back to your human form. That's so freaking awesome. Everyone really expected this to be in the game but it was removed for some reason. Now I understand this could have caused some issues during the story missions but after finishing the story this feature could have been really awesome. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this feature being removed from the game. Now moving to the next one. So currently as PK rewards there are various traps that you can actually access in the city of Villador. But there are few traps that were actually removed from the game. One of such traps is this falling trap with spikes on it. Check this out. <laughs> Even this trap was a concept idea that never saw the light of day. Honestly, it looks good. Now, the next feature is something that will tell you how much potential this game really has. Did you know that you could actually barricade your surroundings in Dying Light 2? Yes, that was a thing. Now, I don't know why Techland even thought of it since the game has no PvP or PvE mode, but from what I understand, this could just be a part of the game or a mission where you're trying to escape from zombies and you enter a building or a house where you need to barricade your surroundings to prevent the zombies from entering inside. I mean, the zombies could still break it. It's not a permanent barricade, but still, it's a really cool feature that was unfortunately removed from the game. Check out the gameplay. <laughs> Next, the game actually had an animation for shield. Now, if you've played Dying Light Bad Blood, which was a battle royale PvP mode, then you would remember a shield animation in that game. 
The same animation is actually present in Dying Light 2, but the shield model itself is removed from the game. So you're basically left with an invisible shield. I don't know why, but it is what it is. Now moving to the next category, which has a bunch of unused weapons. So there are nunchucks, a hellbide, and a flail. I hope I pronounced it right, but these are the weapons that was actually removed from the game. The three weapons I just named, these three weapons are unused weapons, and I don't know why Techland always adds a nunchuck in their game, but they also somehow always mess up and fail to add these weapons. It's really weird. Anyways, the next feature is something people would have loved. It's the personal stats. Yes, you could actually view your personal stats like playtime, the amount of time you died, travel distance, and a lot more important stuff. Honestly, it would have been a pretty useful feature, but now there is no way to access it. Instead, we actually have this stupid call for help option here. I don't use that at all. Now, the next removed feature is the performance test on PC. This basically lets you test the performance of your game to see the amount of FPS you're getting and to see the amount of FPS drops you're getting. It's a helpful feature, but it is removed from the game. Next, we have some unused model from various side quests that was actually removed from the game, even though side quests were removed. Check out these unused models. So yeah guys, that was all the cut content from Dying Light 2 that was removed. In fact, there are many more stuff that was removed since 2018 and 2019. The game looks nothing like what we saw back in 2018 and 2019. Being honest, back then the game had a really dark feel to it. It felt like the world was actually ending, but now the game feels very different and too much colorful. I can even say that the game was really, really rushed. But hey, that's my opinion and more on that in a different video where I'm going to review Dying Light 2. Yes, my review for the game is finally coming out and the reason why it's coming this late is because Techland said themselves the game has 500 hours worth of content and my friends, I have 800 hours in the game. Yes, I know, I can finally go out and touch some grass. I actually need to do that. But hey, being honest, they told 500 hours, I went way above that and I want to see what this game has to offer. So I seriously have three different saves with different endings and I have seen everything in the game. So I can finally do an in-depth review of Dying Light 2. Anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, stay safe and stay human.